science fans, and welcome to Sciencia. Our topic for today's genetics and molecular biology lecture series are genetic disorders. With COVID-19 and the massive media coverage that it gets, a lot of us know more about how viruses cause disease. In a nutshell, when viruses enter the body and are recognized by receptors on the surface of our cells, they are engulfed by our cells where they hijack the molecular processes of the cell through the DNA or RNA they are carrying, temporarily altering our genome or transcriptome and transforming our cells into virus factories. Thankfully, most of the mutations these viruses cause are called somatic mutations. These are temporary mutations that do not get passed on to the next generation. Even in the absence of these viruses, our species already suffers from a large variety of programmed diseases embedded in our genome that are called germ mutations. Not because they are caused by icky germs, but because they are present in our germ cells or sex cells and can then be transmitted to our children and their children's children. To top it off, random mutations can also happen during development that can also cause genetic disorders. There are three general kinds of genetic disorders, but they are all grounded in changes or alterations in the genome that result to a difference in the protein product and therefore the organism's physical characteristics. If you recall the process of transcription and translation in our previous videos, our body responds to stimuli by producing proteins. And this is done through the process of transcription where a discrete portion of your genome, called a gene, is copied into a temporary messenger RNA. And once this mature messenger RNA leaves the nucleus and goes into the ribosome, the process of translation occurs where the mRNA is used as a recipe to synthesize the needed protein. One type of genetic disorder are single gene disorders, where mutations only affect one gene. Single gene disorders can arise from substitution mutations, wherein one nucleotide is replaced by another. In substitution mutations, silent mutations can happen most frequently as the substitution does not change the final protein product and thus have no harm. A disorder, however, can arise from a missense substitution mutation where the substitution changes an amino acid in the final protein. Or during a nonsense substitution mutation where the substitution truncates the protein because of an early stop signal. Single gene disorders can also arise from insertion mutations. And this is when one or more nucleotides get inserted into a gene. When one or two nucleotides are inserted, this results to a frame shift mutation where the reading frame of three nucleotides each per codon are shifted. When three nucleotides are inserted, this could result to a non-frame shift mutation where the reading frame is not changed. Frame shift insertion mutations tend to create proteins that are drastically different from the original because every single amino acid after the insertion tends to be different. On the other hand, non-frame shift insertion mutations can sometimes create only slightly different proteins because what happens is only an additional amino acid at the point of insertion is changing the final protein product. Single gene genetic disorders can also arise from deletion mutations wherein one or more nucleotides disappear from the gene. When one or two bases are deleted, this results to a frame shift deletion mutation, while when three bases are deleted, it could result to a non-frame shift deletion mutation. Just like in insertion mutations, a frame shift deletion mutation would result to a drastically different protein because every single amino acid after the point of deletion would be different. However, in a non-frame shift deletion mutation, it often results to a protein that is only one amino acid shorter compared to the original. Sickle cell anemia is an example of a single gene disorder. 
It is caused by a mutation in the hemoglobin beta gene found in chromosome 11. And this causes a drastically different shape in the hemoglobin protein that is responsible for carrying oxygen all over the body. In people with sickle cell anemia, abnormal hemoglobin molecules called hemoglobin S stick to one another and form long rod-like structures. These structures cause red blood cells to become stiff, assuming a sickle shape. Their shape causes these red blood cells to pile up, causing blockages and damaging vital organs and tissues. Another example of a single gene disorder is cystic fibrosis. It is caused by a mutation in the CFTR gene found in chromosome 7. Cystic fibrosis is characterized by the buildup of thick, sticky mucus that can damage many of the body's organs. The disorder's most common signs and symptoms include progressive damage to the respiratory system and chronic digestive system problems. Our third example of a single gene disorder is Huntington's disease. It affects 7 in 100,000 people and is a neurodegenerative disease caused by a mutation in the HTT gene found in chromosome 4. Huntington's disease is a fatal genetic disorder that causes the progressive breakdown of nerve cells in the brain. It deteriorates a person's physical and mental abilities with symptoms usually appearing between the ages of 30 to 50 and worsening over a 10 to 25 year period. Ultimately, the weakened individual succumbs to pneumonia, heart failure, or other complications. Another type of genetic disorder would be chromosomal abnormalities. And this is when portions or whole chromosomes end up missing, added, or damaged. There are four general types of chromosomal mutations. Deletions are when a portion of the chromosome is lost. Duplication or insertion is when a portion is cloned and inserted within a chromosome, resulting to a larger chromosome. Inversion is when a portion is flipped and thus inverting the content. And translocation is when a fragment is transferred to a different portion of the chromosome or a different chromosome altogether. Chromosomal disorders can also arise from whole chromosomes missing or whole chromosomes added to the genome of an organism. Trisomy 13 is one of the major aneuploidies, and it occurs in 1 in every 16,000 newborns. An aneuploidy is when an organism has an irregular number of chromosomes. If you remember, we should have exactly two copies of each chromosome. And an aneuploidy is when you have more than two or less than two. Trisomy 13 is also called Patau syndrome. It is a chromosomal condition associated with heart defects, brain or spinal cord abnormalities, very small or poorly developed eyes, extra fingers or toes, a cleft lip, and the cleft palate. Due to the presence of several life-threatening medical problems, many infants with trisomy 13 die within the first days or weeks of life. Only 5% to 10% of children with this condition live past their first year. Another example of a chromosomal genetic disorder is the Prader-Willi syndrome. This disease occurs in 1 in every 15,000 births. In infancy, Prader-Willi syndrome is characterized by weak muscle tone and delayed development. Beginning in childhood, affected individuals develop an insatiable appetite which leads to obesity. People with Prader-Willi syndrome typically have mild to moderate intellectual impairment as well as behavioral problems including temper outbursts and compulsive behavior such as picking at the skin. Additional features of this condition include distinctive facial features such as a narrow forehead, almond-shaped eyes, and a triangular mouth. Both affected males and affected females have underdeveloped genitals and are unable to have children. About 70% of the cases of Prader-Willi syndrome is caused by a deletion of a portion of chromosome 15. However, about 25% is caused by the inheritance of two copies of the maternal chromosome 15 and no copies from the father at all. 
This is called maternal uniparental disomy. Trisomy 21 or Down syndrome is a well-known chromosomal disorder that occurs in one in every 700 births. Even though people with Down syndrome might act and look similar, each person has different abilities. People with Down syndrome usually have an IQ in the mild to moderately low range and are slower to speak than other children. Some common physical features of Down syndrome include heart, gut, blood, and brain issues or defects, a flattened face, especially the bridge of the nose, almond-shaped eyes that slant up, tiny white spots on the irises of the eye, a single line across the palm of the hand, and poor muscle tone or loose joints. Although individuals with chromosomal disorders are born with it, it doesn't mean that they inherited the disease from their parents. The mutations that lead to chromosomal abnormalities occur randomly and are only uncorrected when we age or when we are stressed. Apart from the different process of chromosomal mutations discussed, non-disjunction or the failure of partner chromosomes to separate properly during cell division could have also happened. And again, this could happen completely randomly. Also, most individuals with chromosomal disorders are incapable of having children because of their inability to create healthy and functional sperm or egg cells. And this is because of the irregular number of chromosomes that they have that prevent an even division of chromosomes to be distributed in their egg or sperm cells. And finally, you have complex or multifactorial disorders that arise from mutations in multiple genes and can be affected by your environment and habits. What distinguishes multifactorial disorders from other genetic diseases is that the inheritance patterns are not clear. And because it is a mixture of behavior and environment with genetics, some can have the genes but not the disease. One example of a multifactorial disorder is Crohn's disease that occurs in 199 individuals out of 100,000 births. And it is more common in North American and European populations. Crohn's disease is an inflammatory bowel disease that can lead to abdominal pain, severe diarrhea, fatigue, weight loss, and malnutrition. The inflammation caused by Crohn's disease often spreads deep into the layers of affected bowel tissue and can be both painful and debilitating and sometimes may lead to life-threatening complications. The onset of Crohn's disease is complex, but studies have shown diet rich in processed or canned foods with preservatives, smoking or exposure to secondhand smoke, and excessive consumption of antibiotics can contribute to its aggravation. Type 2 diabetes, where the body does not produce or use insulin well, is another example of a multifactorial disorder that is present in 1 in 10 individuals. Diabetes is a metabolic disease that causes high blood sugar. The hormone insulin moves sugar from the blood into your cells to be stored or used for energy. But with diabetes, your body either doesn't make enough insulin or can't effectively use the insulin it does make. The general symptoms of diabetes include increased hunger and thirst, weight loss, frequent urination, blurry vision, extreme fatigue, and wounds that don't heal. Diabetes can eventually lead to strokes, heart disease, and organ failures. Doctors often advise lifestyle changes for people diagnosed with diabetes. And this can include switching to a diet with lesser carbohydrates and as well as an active lifestyle with exercise. And then we have cancer. Cancer is a multifactorial genetic disorder that accumulates large amounts of gene and chromosome level mutations that eventually prevents the body from correcting these errors and causes uncontrolled proliferation of cells. Cancer, in the simplest, is an abnormal group of cells. Its proliferation around the body results to tumors that can obstruct the function of organs and steal essential nutrients from other parts of the body. It becomes even more destructive as it converts other functional cells in the body into versions of itself. 
for most, if not all, of these genetic disorders, we have available treatments but no cures. Treatments are medical procedures that you can get in order to lessen the symptoms of the disease or provide palliative care. Cures, on the other hand, are those that completely remove any trace of the disease and prevent it from coming back. The presence of these incurable diseases are one of the challenges of modern biotechnology and thus we seek to alter the cellular and molecular characteristics of affected cells. The true test of modern biotech is to seek the cure for these diseases so that hundreds and thousands of individuals can have better lives. I hope you are able to learn something from our short video on genetic disorders. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please don't hesitate to message me, your resident Filipina scientist, in the comments section below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much and see you around!